Uh, I think, as has been the case for a while now, that's the, the $64,000 question. I mean, the, the latest uh, information that I have from the, from the BID team in Port Moresby, from the CEO, uh, Andrew Hill, is that um, he's expecting an announcement uh, in a, probably a couple of weeks, but he didn't specify what that announcement would be. Um, what we do know is that um, Peter Valandes, uh, head of the Australian Rugby League Commission, was on uh, TV here in Australia a couple of weeks ago saying that uh, a deal had been reached with the Australian government. Um, interpret that any way you wish. But what he said was without that deal, the PNG bid would not be allowed to go forward or be able to go forward. But he said there would still be some way to go even after that. And then on grand final day, he came out and said that of the nine bids that there are in at the moment for NRL licenses, the only one that stacked up, the only one that had a satisfactory business case was PNG. So that's roughly where we're at. And then suddenly we get this story today about whether or not uh, James Marape should or shouldn't sign a deal with China at some point in the future. I'm not sure where that fits in, to be honest, um, because if a deal has been done between the Australian government and, and the NRL and the Commission, a deal has been done. It's as simple as that. Are, are they going to put add-ons in? Or are they going to put pressure on Papua New Guinea? I'm not entirely sure. But the conclusion, it could be weeks away. It could still be months away. OK, and rugby, as we know, is huge in Papua New Guinea, and the NRL knows that as well. What would it mean for supporters, for people in Papua New Guinea, to finally have their own home team to support? Uh, I think it would mean an immense amount to a country where rugby league is the national sport. Sometimes they say it's the only country where it's the national sport, but I believe Cook Islands might have something to say about that on a much smaller scale, but that's by the by. Yeah, I mean, they love their rugby league in uh, in Port Moresby and indeed in the rest of Papua New Guinea, particularly up in the Highlands. And you, you go to the country and you won't have to go too far to find somebody wearing a, an NRL jersey or for that matter, perhaps a PNG Hunters jersey, because of course they already have their own team in the second tier competition, the Queensland Cup. And they came within an ace of making the grand final this year for the first time since they won it back in 2014. One thing that does slightly concern me, and I've heard colleagues from Papua New Guinea uh, raise this too, is that if you follow social media and the stories that have cropped up, particularly from commercial radio stations in Australia, who have said more than once that it's a done deal, when clearly it's not, um, there are a lot of people in Papua New Guinea, I believe, think they've already got a team. And if by any chance it all goes wrong and the deal falls over, then you're going to have a lot of very disappointed people on your hands. But let's be positive about this. If they get a team, it would be fantastic for Papua New Guinea. And in terms of development and attracting people into the country, I don't think it could fail from that point of view. I think it would be an absolute winner for them. Uh, Richard, we've got the PNG Hunters playing in the Queensland Rugby League competition for, for quite some time now. Do we know what that NRL team in PNG might be called? And, and what are you expecting of the team's makeup? As far as the name is concerned, if they've chosen one, I don't know what it is. Uh, and I imagine they would keep that under wraps until they felt the time was right. Once the bid has been accepted and they've been given a start date, that that would all emerge. Uh, what I can tell you, again, based on what I've been told by the, the CEO of the bid team in Port Moresby, is that the team that would take to the field for Papua New Guinea, if we're talking 2028 at the earliest, would not be a team of 13 Papua New Guineans. It's, it's as simple as that. It, it wouldn't happen in the first instance. But if you look at the teams that are in the NRL now, they're not all 100% Australian. They feature New Zealanders and they feature Pacific Islanders. It's a mix of players. Uh, but that's exactly what the Papua New Guinea team would be as well. However, there is a long-term aim, I think, and we're talking probably five, six, seven years down the track, if the team beds down and is successful as an entity, they might move towards a team which is entirely made up of Papua New Guinea players as the development pathways grow in the country, because that's one of the issues they have, is the development pathways are not great. Uh, but they've started to put that right indeed in the last 12 months. And quite recently, they had a, a tournament which was televised over there featuring academy teams, academies which had only been established within the last 12 months. So, yeah, there's a lot to come out of it. The team won't be made entirely of PNG players in the first instance, but that could change over time. We've spoken about the politics of this uh, just a moment ago, but um, the Albanese government could potentially be forking out up to $600 million uh, to help Papua New Guinea realise its dream. That's, that's a lot of money, Richard. 
it, it is a lot of money, but it rather depends on how that money is portioned. Now, again, I've been given a version of events that $600 million would not go to a Papua New Guinean NRL team. The estimates say it costs you about $30 million a year to run an NRL team. So if we're talking about $60 million a year over 10 years, the $600 million, clearly they don't need $60 million to run the team. What they may use the money for, indeed, I think this is part of the plan, is to build those development pathways, to build the academies, to influence the presence of rugby league in the schools, those sorts of things, development issues. But I've also been told that some of the money, I don't know how much, is aimed to go to other parts of the Pacific. Um, it's worth noting that of the eight bids that aren't stacking up at the moment, one of them is a bid from Fiji, who would also like to have a team in the NRL. And clearly, if Papua New Guinea succeed, that could be the pathway for them, maybe to get a team somewhere down the track. But I don't think they'll make it through on this first occasion. So yeah, th th that $600 million figure is, is regularly bandied around. But I think people need to look a little bit beneath the surface and just work out what that money is going to be used for and how it's going to be used. It's not all going to be ploughed into a rugby league team. Richard, you went really good to get your thoughts once again. Thanks very much. My pleasure.